Last week, Adobe released an update for Lightroom Classic. And one of the features that really stands out is the auto culling. It uses AI to help you determine your best captures faster. Today, I'm gonna to simplify everything that you need to know about this new feature. Auto culling in Lightroom Classic, coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanner, I'm a professional photographer, and today we're gonna to work with one of the new features inside Lightroom Classic version 15, auto culling. Adobe's employing AI to help you quickly sift through your images so you can get the best ones right away. Now, for those of you who think AI is cheating when it comes to image making and are just all out opposed to AI, this is a feature that doesn't change your images. It simply helps you speed up your workflow so you can spend more time editing and less time sorting. So let's jump into Lightroom Classic and I'll show you everything you need to know about auto culling and how it can save you a ton of time. Now, if you can stay till the end, I'll show you a way that auto culling can actually even save you a little money. All right, let's get into it. We're inside Lightroom Classic, and just so you know, when we go to About Lightroom Classic, you can see here that this is the 15.0 release. This is the newest release. And so this is the one that's gonna give you, over here, when we're in the library mode, over here, we're gonna see Assisted Culling. And you can see here, it says Early Access. And what that means is, is Adobe is kind of just setting this out there for us to experiment with, and they're probably still working out a few bugs, but you'll see that it works pretty darn good. So what we do is just click on the arrow and then we get this whole section of information that we can work with. Now what it does is goes into your images and does some sorting for you. So for instance, if you wanted to select subject focus, you can select the subject focus and it'll work within, if you work with folders, that's great. I don't work with folders. I always work with collections. So in the collection, in this case, there's portraits, there's a hundred of them you can see right here. And we've got a hundred of them. What it'll do is it'll say this gradient here is at 50% and you can zoom it all the way up to hundred or obviously zero. So what it does is this is what determines how accurate you want this to be. So for instance, if you're just looking for images that were the subjects in focus, you can leave it here. You can start sliding over and you can see what happens when we slide it over. These start getting marked red, meaning these are not sharp enough of a subject. So for me in doing portraits, what I want to do is I want to um, make sure that the eyes in focus. I don't care as much about the subject. I don't want AI trying to determine if the subject is in focus. I want it to determine if the eye is in focus. So let's go ahead and click on that and we'll click on eye focus. And again, we have that same slider pops up and you can start sliding this over to make a determination as to what's most important when the eye is in focus. Because obviously, if you're shooting a portrait and the eyes are in focus, you can get away with a lot of things. But um, if the eyes are not in focus, no matter what else, it's not going to work. So you really need your eyes in focus. Now, you can reject this here. Reject photos without people's eyes, meaning obviously if they look away or something like that. Or if their eyes are open, reject the photos without people's eyes or reject the can't tell images. So you can, you can start varying these little check marks as to what you want. So from my standpoint, what I want to do is I want sharp focus. I don't need anything rejected per se. I think what I'm going to do is just run it just as it is. And if there's eyes that are closed, it's not going to see them in focus. So it's not going to check them. So like this one here, her eyes are not open. So it gives it a red mark. You can see what it does. It gives it red marks as it goes, right? So those are ones that don't fit the criteria of what I'm looking for. And as we scroll down through here, we can see all the images here. Some are check marks. So those would be eliminated from my basic group. And if you want to see numbers, what you can do is you can look down here and you can see out of those 100, 82 are selects and 18 are rejects. So as we move this sharpening tool back this way, we can see that it'll select all 100. And that obviously doesn't do as much good, right? But we can slide this over all the way to 100%, and it's only going to show us 51 selects. 51 that are ultimately sharp eyes, because that's what we're looking for, eye focus in this particular case. 
Now you can also reject, if you're just loading lots of images, you can reject things like documents or misfires or exposure issues. Like if something is overexposed or underexposed, it'll eliminate it. Now, when you're shooting raw, a lot of times there's some push and pull that you can do. So maybe that's not something that you want to have clicked because it might eliminate some images that you would normally be able to work with. But in this case, we'll just leave it alone. And as we click this, we can see we have exposure. We don't have any exposure issues. Otherwise, this number right down here would change. So, and we don't have any misfires because when we click that, we can see that nothing changes as well. So now we've gone from 100 images to 51 images. And this is pretty good, right? So this, is, this does a pretty good job. And we know that this is 100% in focus. But check this out. What I want to show you is how good this software is. So let's go in here. We can see here our eyes are slightly closed. Looking away. Right here, they're sharp. Let's take a look at these two. All of these don't meet the criteria, meaning that the eyes are not sharp enough. So let's go down. We can see a lot of these here have been eliminated. We come down here, and these are two that are shot right after one another, both with their eyes open. Let's take a look. And we'll go into hit C so we can really compare these. Let's sync those, and that way we're looking at the same thing. Now you can see, here's what we did. This first one here was eliminated because it saw that this eye really wasn't that sharp, but here it's sharp. So as we pull back, we can see that was a really good move. So I think uh, Lightroom Classic did a fantastic job eliminating that. So we didn't have to go in and look really close on each one. We know that this set here is all going to be sharp eyes. And that is a great way to go when you're when you're culling your images. Start with sharp eyes. You can get the poses later, but for right now, we're just making sure that all the images are sharp. Because anything that doesn't have a sharp eye, my customer is never ever going to see. I'm going to pull that out because almost all the time, if you show them one that has a uh, an eye that's out of focus, they're going to say, "Oh, I really like that pose." And then you got to go in and Photoshop and build in an eye, and it's it's a real pain. So. I try to eliminate those from the vision. And as you look at these, we've got tons of images to choose from. So now that we've done this and we've got our selections that are our favorites, what we can do is we can just view selects, for instance. Now then all of these are green checked. Now you can go in and do what you want to do. Like for instance, you could do um, Command A and that's going to select all of them or Control A if you're on a PC. That's going to select all of them. And then you're going to say add a letter P will be the flag. So now that we've got all of these flagged, we can take, come over here and create a collection of all of these images. That's one way to do it. Another way, let's undo that. Another way to do that is to let Lightroom do a little bit of work. So when we come over here, we have organized results. So we can do some batch actions. So let's just check this out. We come in here, we could apply a flag by doing this, right? That would be that same action of selecting all and applying a flag. Or we could apply a rating if you use ratings or color labels. Or look at this, add to a collection. So let's do this and let's create a collection. We'll create a collection and we'll call this Portrait Best. Create, we'll add these to a collection and we'll click OK. So now down here, portrait best, we all of a sudden have 51 of our images and they're all in our favorites of images that we have here. So we have, we have got all those with sharp eyes. So as we look at these images, we can kind of, kind of scroll through these. Look at that, her eyes are closed, but we didn't have that checked over here. So let's go back in here and go reject unless eyes are open or can't tell. And look what it did. Lightroom put that little red X on this one here, so that's rejected. Now you could simply just hit the X and that will put a black flag on it. You'll see how it's grayed out. So this gives us all of the images. Now we're down to, I believe, 50 even. Let's check. And there we go. We've got our 50 even that we like. Now, if you want to stack images, if you use that kind of a categorization tool, 
you can go to auto stack. And what auto stack will do is you can stack images by similarity. Because if you're doing a portrait session, a lot of times you're not going to show you know, 20 shots of the same pose, you're going to probably do some changes, right? You're going to pick the best two or three of that pose. So what we can do is stack by visual similarity. And let's click that. Now, right now it put all of them into this same stack, but you've got this slider here and this slider here, as we move it over to more similar, then we can really define how that looks, right? If we slide it all the way out, then there's no stacks. This is six different stacks and five stacks. You can see this all written right here. See that right there? Four stacks, five stacks. Let's go with six stacks and we'll hit stacks. What Lightroom does is it puts all the images that are similar together. So we can see here there's three. So if we click on that, there's the three that are all similar, right? And if we come in here, these are all her against that tree that are all black, right? And then these are some examples of her standing up. So that's a full length shot. You can see those are that. So this is a pretty great way of organizing your images. So then if you want to go in and say, okay, I want to go to the, the shots against the trees. And those are the ones that we want to, we'll just select. We'll hold the, the uh, shift key down and select those four. And we'll hit the letter N. And that gives us these here that we're going to show the customer. And we can decide, okay, which one do we not want? Well, maybe this one we'll take out. So we'll hit an X on that or delete it, whichever you prefer. And now you've got those images there are the only three they're going to see of her standing on the tree. So standing next to the tree here again, these are 15 shots here, right? This is how you would kind of go through and you would pick these and say, okay, which of these do we want to show, right? There's going to be some where the expressions aren't going to be great. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Hit the letter N. So like that expression's not good, so we can hit an X on that. That expression's kind of goofy. We'll hit an X on that. And so we can see that we can go through these and eliminate these. So then you're ends up, you end up with a final group of images that are great to show your customer. And it's fast. This is a pretty fast way to go. So there's probably some questions you have about this because I had some questions. So let me show you a couple other things that I've figured out on this. So let's go into this collection. It's just some birds. And we can see what we've got here. And let's see what it can do with this. So subject focus, we want to do that. We want the subject in focus. Let's go ahead and hit G. You can see all of these are in focus. Let's go eyes open. And look at that. It's looking for human eyes. It's not looking for bird eyes because obviously this bird eye is open in every single shot and it's sharp. So that's not going to help us much. So what it might help with is misfires or exposure issues. So let's try this again with a different set. So this the auto calling doesn't work with birds at all. So let's go ahead and try mammals come in here and we'll say subject focus. That's pretty important. And you could see, I don't know if you saw that up there, but it had a little thermometer goes across that goes through and tests all these. So here's one that's out of focus. It gave it X to it. Let's go ahead and trim that up a little bit. Okay. So now we really want the images that are in focus and we can see even in animals, it will take those and, and eliminate the ones that are out of focus. So let's take a look and see how Lightroom did. The, the left one here should be in focus and the right one, not so. That's in focus, but so is the right one. So it really doesn't seem to be working yet for mammals or birds. So I don't think I would use it for that. So, but for people, it's actually really good to be able to look at images and give you, put them into poses that you like, and also create the, get the images that are just the absolute sharpest on the eyes. So that's a pretty valuable tool. If you like this kind of content, take a second, hit that like button and know that I've got more videos coming soon that break down the other new features released in this latest Adobe update. So don't forget to subscribe and ring that little bell icon to get notified as soon as those videos drop. Now I always read and respond to the comments in the comment section. So feel free to leave a question, suggestion, or feedback down below. I'd love to hear from you. And you know, your ideas often inspire future videos. So keep them coming. 
So, so far we've learned that auto culling works great with portraits of humans, but not so good with animals and birds yet. But that might change. I'm assuming that, that Adobe is gonna probably encompass all the images that we shoot and try to figure out how we can use AI to help us filter through the good shots and the bad shots. But here's a way that you can actually save a lot of time and actually save a little bit of money too. Check this out. The way this, this is gonna help you is upon import. So check this out. Import, and we're gonna go to images, and we're gonna to go to these unloaded portraits that we haven't loaded up yet. And what we can do is we can go on to assisted culling, turn that on, and again, we've got this same information over here, just like we had. So let's go into eye focus, and let's make sure we got 100% of our eye focus. And we're gonna reject any misfires or exposure issues. And out of these images, we've got two that are rejected. As, well, it's good. It's thinking, right? You can see this number growing here. It's going through. Let's see how many it's done. All right, it's picked. It's picked two rejects so far. So now let's check this out. Let's go to subject focus. Make sure that's sharp. And we'll, we'll, we can slide this slider back a little bit. We can see we've got 36 selects and 23 rejects, right? We want to do eyes open, reject eyes without people's eyes, reject can't tell images, make sure those are all checked. And we can auto stack those right from here, but I don't think we really need to. But what is really slick is we can take all of these images and we're only going to upload into our catalog the images that meet our standards. So that means that you're gonna be saving hard drive space. When you've got thousands of images to upload and you only take the top 100 out of a thousand images, then you're saving a lot of disk space by just bringing in the images that you want to keep and you know that the customer is gonna like. So one of the things I want you to think about though, is I want you to work with this auto culling inside a Lightroom Classic like, like I showed you in the first part. So you get used to what it does. You're used to what your parameters are. Do you wanna have your parameters set at 100% for sharp focus or subject focus? You can make those decisions. And once you get into a system that you know exactly how that is, you can create the same thing over and over again and only bring in the images that you want, thereby saving lots of hard drive space over, over time. And once you bring these in, you can also stack them with visual similarity if you prefer to do that. You can figure out the you know, different poses and that's a pretty simple way to go. You can also just come over here and add them to a collection. And let's just put them into, we'll make a new collection. And we'll make sure that when these get imported, now we're just gonna import just the images that we want. So we only wanna import our selects. So that will just, we click down here, bring in on just of our selects and now we import them. So that's a way that Lightroom Classic is gonna save you time and, and essentially money when it's all said and done. All right, I've got more videos coming that are gonna be on some of the new updates inside of Lightroom Classic, so stay tuned for that. We'll see you next time.